I'm Leo Audit for Kit Guru. This is Leo Says at the very end of November. Uh, as you may imagine for this spiel, I keep a sort of a running list of points of uh, news that have interested me through the week. And, and I'm really surprised to see this week that every single thing of interest to me is either Intel or AMD. Even Nvidia doesn't get a mention, which is just surprising. Uh, so let's go from the top. Last week I talked about the Intel ME or management engine uh, security bug that looked to be quite serious and it appears to be really serious. Uh, so the initial news was that the ME can be uh, hacked, controlled across a network, which obviously can be the internet, uh, and it's below operating system level, below BIOS level. It it's truly looks to be appalling, potentially. The snag is the fix which requires a BIOS update, firmware update. Uh, and the thing here is that you need to know that your PC requires an update in order to do the update. After all, many manufacturers, uh, motherboard manufacturers will say, do not update the BIOS if your system is working correctly. It's standard advice. Uh, I think we've all heard it in our time, we've all said it in our time. After all, you can potentially brick your system if you get it wrong. Uh, and don't forget, this is not just motherboards in PCs, this is laptops as well. This, this covers the whole spread of things, as far as more it also includes servers. So you have to know that you require a BIOS update. Now, Intel has rolled out a tool. You can pop off their website, download this tool, install it, and it will then scan your system and tell you whether or not you've got a problem potentially, which I assume means it checks to see which version of ME is installed in your PC, laptop, server, whatever. Uh, but the thing is, in my case, it didn't work. I've got um, an X99 system, Core i7, uh, still, uh, still waiting to get my Threadripper system going. And when I downloaded the tool, it said, oh, you have to install a digital certificate. Uh, the package of uh, software included a certificate. It, did, it didn't help. Uh, I pointed the software at it and I got no joy. So I have no clue whether or not I require a BIOS update for my system to make the ME bug go away or the, the ME flaw go away. I, I guess I do. But until my motherboard manufacturer, which happens to be EVGA, releases a BIOS on my motherboard, uh, and I have no idea whether it will or not, it's the Micro 2, for what it's worth, X99, then I, I simply don't know. And if they do release an update and I spot it, then obviously I have to trust it's an update that says this addresses your ME uh, problem or potential problem because uh, not all BIOS updates update the firmware in the ME. So we shall see. Uh, and this looks to be horrible because essentially every Windows, uh, every Intel PC laptop server that includes an ME, which is a great many of them uh, of the affected generations, some colossal percentage will never be updated, even if the motherboard manufacturer releases an update. So goodness knows what's going to happen over time. But this looks like it's just going to be a thing that hangs around forever. And a problem that hangs around forever means that at some point, some bright spark is going to attack it. We had it here in the UK a while ago where Windows, was it XP? Uh, the National Health Service, uh, various people were still using quite old PCs. And I believe some of the police as well and certain companies. And it, uh, it was an exploit that was well known because XP, assuming it was XP, is no longer supported by Microsoft. Uh, so the holes were there and along came someone and attacked them. Uh, what can you do? I mean, if a flaw's there, it's gonna be exploited. And if it's gonna be there forever, the problem is there forever. Uh, ironically, in associated news, Intel intends to kill the legacy BIOS by 2020 and move exclusively to UEFI. Fair enough, fine. Um, none of which addresses things like the ME. So you read something like legacy bias to die away with old clutter, all the new stuff, that's fine. But quite clearly there are still areas that need to be addressed beyond the bias or UEFI and that's all there is to it. Other Intel stuff, uh, this is quite good. Uh, Intel's adding an assembly and test facility in Chengdu, China to lines it already has in Malaysia, has had in Malaysia for a long time where they assemble uh, processor packages. This is so they can uh, manufacture more Coffee Lake CPUs and actually put more CPUs together. Uh, so once you've got all the bits of silicon off all the wafers and you bin them and you put them into packages, uh, you end up with CPUs. Uh, it's quite a significant process. The fact that they're moving to China, Malaysia apparently can't cope with all the demand. Well, okie dokie. Uh, I'm sure the rushed launch of Coffee Lake really hasn't helped because they have just had no chance to stockpile uh, processors. Uh, they're running, running, running to, to get this to catch up with the launch that they brought in just to basically stymie Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7. Other Intel stuff, uh, Optane. Now, Optane is a curious thing because we know that Optane in SSD form to cache your hard drive, we kind of understand what that's about. And 
truth be told, we're not that excited about it because if you want a fast hard drive, it's called an SSD. So the idea of using a caching device to speed up your hard drive, that's all well and good, but that's existed for a while. You could buy 20 and 30 gigabyte SSDs, just conventional SSDs. The fact Intel's come out with something new that they've called Optane that does the same job. Yeah, okay. Optane dims, Optane as memory, where you do away with memory and you have just Optane, and it's sort of a combination of stuff. The precise details are vague to me. Uh, I think they're vague to most people. But nonetheless, I want to see what Optane dims are like. I want to see which platforms support them. I want to see what they perform like. I want to see if it actually means a change to how we do things, or is it just a different kind of memory? We've seen different kinds of memory in the past, RD, RAM, and such like Rambus. And it didn't really make a lot of difference. It was just a faster memory, and then you change to a different kind of dims, DDR2, 3, 4, and on you go. Optane promises to be something different, but till we see it, we don't know. And the trouble is, at the moment, it looks to be bad. Uh, speed figures that we've seen leaked, obviously, are unimpressive. Durability appears to be awful, which is um, something you get with certain types of NAND flashing SSDs when you go from 2 to 3 to 4 bit cells. Durability can drop off a cliff. Uh, and it appears that Optane, it appears that Optane is suffering from really poor durability. Uh, over provisioning in the uh, memory or the flash storage also appears to be very large and that suggests again that durability is bad if you need over provisioning it's a sort of a safety buffer uh, so the more um, over provisioning you require the more wasted space you've got but they don't do it for fun they do it for a reason so if there's over provisioning you have to ask why not that at the moment intel is saying anything about anything so th this again is through leaks the biggest thing here is this Target markets are big data analytics, cloud, VM, virtual machine, AI, artificial intelligence, and databases held in memory, i.e. very fast things, but no mention of gamers and workstations. So fast things that doesn't really matter how much they cost, as opposed to people that want to read and write data for a good long time and don't want to spend a lot of cash. So that does not sound at all promising. Anyway, as we understand it, Optane DIMMs are on Intel's roadmap to launch in H1 2018. Obviously, we're still in Q4 2017, which means maybe coming soon. You have to think that if it was Q1 2018, that would imply um, uh, CES. The fact it's H2 2018 kind of says May or June. Uh, so you're now thinking Computex. That's obviously if they uh, manage to fulfill this. And again, launch. Well, what does launch mean? Does that mean a launch with stock or does it mean a paper launch? So at the moment, all you can really say is sometime in 2018, we should see Optane dims, except they're not coming to us. They're going to all the other markets. Much sooner than that, in February 2018, we can expect to see Ryzen 2, which is codenamed Pinnacle 7. Uh, and that will be, that's the update to Ryzen 7, and then that will be followed in March with Pinnacles 5 and 3. And this is the 12 nanometer Ryzen. Now, at the moment, Ryzen uses 14 nanometer FinFET, so moving to a die shrink, 12 nanometer, apparently 12 nanometer low power from Global Foundries, uh, that should be good. I mean, a smaller die area should be cheaper. Hopefully, it means higher clock speeds, and AMD badly needs higher clock speeds. So, if it means that processors that currently run at 3.6 gigahertz and just about overclocked to 4 gigahertz, if instead it means they run at 4 gigahertz and just about overclocked to 4.3, 4.4, that's a very good thing. That is something, if that is what happens, that we uh, would welcome because the, the difference in clock speeds between uh, AMD and Intel is a killer. You know, four gigahertz on a good AMD, five gigahertz on a good Intel. There's a whole gigahertz difference. And if AMD can close that gap somewhat, then they'll take back some of that Coffee Lake advantage. Coffee Lake six cores rather than four. AMD bumps up clock speeds without colossal power, uh, without colossal yeah, power draw and heat. Good thing. Uh, one thing that um, came off this sort of bit of paperwork I saw was that apparently, apparently, the new CPUs will use 400 series chipsets rather than the existing 300 series. So think X470 and B450, for example, if they keep the same model code numbers. Now, the thing with that is we can expect, because AMD has committed, that uh, Ryzen will use socket AM4 for the current generation and for the next and probably for the one after that. But if the new processor using the same socket requires a new chipset, that's kind of not really too clear where we stand with backwards and forwards compatibility. In other words, you could physically have a processor that drops in a motherboard but is not necessarily supported by it. 
Uh, so it could be that a new Ryzen 2 processor, uh, Pinnacle 7, might drop in your existing motherboard but not work, potentially. It might not just be a BIOS job, so it would physically fit but not necessarily run. Uh, and indeed, and this would surely not be the case, if you've got a new motherboard you couldn't put your existing processor in, but hope to goodness that wouldn't be the case. Hopefully there will at least be backwards compatibility, new motherboard, old processor. Uh, as to whether your existing board you can simply do a processor swap, that is a big, big, big question. And it would be fair to say to AMD, if you can't, but it's still AM4, technically they haven't broken their word, but it wouldn't be. It wouldn't smell right, it wouldn't be good, it wouldn't feel right to AMD, uh, AMD loyal customers. So Pinnacle 7, looking forward to seeing that. If it's about clock speed, yes, please bring it on. But until we actually know what is compatible with what, uh, definitely the jury is still out on that one. Anyway, February 2018, looking forward to that. Uh, this uh, Global Foundry's 12 nanometer process will also be used for graphics. As to which graphics, that also remains to be seen because there are Vega, Polaris and Consoles graphics on AMD's roadmap at the moment. And do we mean a new Vega? Do we mean Polaris might get a die shrink? I mean, it's possible. Uh, is it going to be for consoles? Not a clue. So new process will also go to graphics, but which graphics? And that's a big, big question. Uh, if it comes to Vega and it makes a difference, well, that would be a good thing. Looking beyond 12 nanometer low power, this is interesting. 7 nanometer has been promised for, a, well, not promised, that's entirely wrong. It has been rumoured strongly that 7 nanometer will be coming for Epic, uh, which will be using Zen 2 cores. And you hope for Threadripper as well. In which case you could effectively end up with the equivalent of two current EPICs in a single socket. Uh, so your dual EPIC system becomes a single EPIC system with 64 cores, 8 channel DDR4 and essentially infinite PCI Express and such like. If so, that would be remarkable. I might even stop hating the name EPIC uh, because I really don't like it. But the technology potentially is whoa i mean whoa but that is based on this infinity fabric thing and putting together different cores it's based on using zen 2 so first we need zen 2 then we need to see what they do with it but that in principle sounds absolutely wowza by contrast intel is really gloomy about 10 nanometer uh, they're currently using 14 nanometer plus plus i think it's only got two pluses and it moved to three pluses yet in coffee lake 10 nanometer is purported, which is the next step, it's purported to be nothing special and not as good as 14 nanometer plus plus. It won't be till they've updated the 10 nanometer apparently until at least 10 nanometer plus or maybe even plus plus that actually it's going to be anything that they want to admit about to the public. So the next processor, Cannon Lake, at the, end of, at the end of 2018, a whole year away, is already incredibly being written off as a dud. Uh, which I've never heard of any such thing before. Coffee Lake we know works well. Cannon Lake is apparently a year away already, no good. Uh, quite remarkable. In the meantime, Coffee Lake. Now, we've seen a whole bunch of processors have been uh, announced because so far Intel has launched, I'm going to put this in inverted commas, a, a handful of Core i357, which you can barely buy, two of each, uh, a regular and a K skew. And they've now brought out a whole list of parts, uh, four Core i7s, 10 Core i5s, 10 Core i3s, also Pentium Gold and Celeron, a massive list of 40 something processors, which includes those six we already know about. And fair enough. And there's also a massive number of uh, mobile parts, uh, Core i357 and Core i9. Uh, Core i9 8950HK. This is official Intel or official looking Intel documentation I saw on Anantech. Uh, they are normally as good as gold when it comes to stuff like this. So I'm going to assume it's gospel. The Core i9 part, the 8950HK, looks frankly exactly the same spec. I mean, it's very vague specs as the Core i7 8950H except it's K, therefore unlocked, therefore you can overclock it. Which means at the moment, Coffee Lake has one single Core i9 model listed, and that's a mobile part, which is a very strange state of affairs. In a sense, it does show that mobile laptops, that's where the future is. I mean, the present and the future is. PCs are important, gaming PCs are still important, but laptops and all the other things, 
uh, they are, you know, that's where the world is going, no two ways about it. So the idea there's one core i9 Coffee Lake listed and it's a mobile part, that's a revelation. Uh, some of these uh, Core i5s, Core i7s had a B suffix to them. Never heard of B before, don't know what it stands for, not a clue. Uh, so then we have the chipset. And now this is something I believe I alluded to in my Coffee Lake uh, launch piece for Kit Guru where we've launched with Z370, which is a Z270 of the paint job. But the true Coffee Lake uh, chipset is due to be Z390. And we're not going to see that until some point during 2018, hopefully sooner rather than later, uh, which is when we'll see motherboards that are true Coffee Lake motherboards. The thing is that that chipset apparently supports eight core processors, not just six core. This now seems to be solid information. It started as a firm rumor. It now seems to be really solid information which means that the six core coffee lakes we've seen so far are not the peak of coffee lake there are eight cores coming which means if you've rushed out to buy a six core coffee lake well okay but more to the point if you've rushed out to buy uh, a z370 motherboard it's looking like that might not have been the brightest move until we know what z390 brings to the party now if all z390 brings is supports eight core processors well okay not the end of the world but if it has other features about which we currently know nothing then that would suggest the Z370 is very much a stopgap and Z390 is the true thing. We're going to have to see how that one pans out. But there are high-end motherboards that we are still waiting to see that use Z370. And perhaps the reason we're waiting for them is because actually when they finally pop up, they use Z390. That would make sense because a super duper high-end mega expensive motherboard, and I have one particular model in mind with Z370, might suddenly become not the greatest thing ever, but the second greatest thing. And no one wants to be the second greatest thing. Uh, and also, and some really peculiar news this, uh, I've got this down as I don't quite believe what I'm seeing news. Ada64, the utility that um, we uh, many websites use for uh, reviewing things, stress tests and such like, uh, they've just done a beta release which includes a change log that mentions not only Intel Core 8000 series processors, but also mentions Intel Core 9000. And I cannot begin to imagine why that might be. If we see the replacement for Coffee Lake before the end of 2018. That would be just extraordinary, particularly as it's reported, as I say, to be a stinker because the process is reported to be no good. The idea the software is already supporting processes that aren't due for release until the end of 2018. What on earth? I'm putting that one down as I don't get it. I just don't get that. Very strange. So there we go. Um, all manner of Intel and AMD stuff. Right now, Intel's looking good and AMD's looking a bit wobbly. Judging by that news, AMD's got, hopefully, good stuff coming early in the new year. And Intel's got some not such good stuff coming. Uh, Optane dims for one. But uh, when Z390 comes, they might be upsetting a few of their uh, loyal customers who already spent money on Z370. Time will tell. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from KitGuru, click to subscribe. I'm your Wood for KitGuru. This is Leo Says.